Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we've got Google's newest Chromebook in today. This is the Pixelbook Go. This is Google's interpretation about what the perfect Chromebook should look like. And this one has a 13 inch display and starts at around $649. We're going to be taking a closer look at this new Chromebook in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from Google. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get to it now and see what this new Chromebook is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Uh, one thing to note on this Chromebook line is that they are powered by Intel Y series processors. Uh, these are the same chips you might find in the MacBook Air from Apple. They are very power efficient, and as a result, this is a fanless laptop. It makes no noise at all when it's on, unless you got music going or something. Uh, so it's very nice for that uh, feature, but you will be paying a performance price on these chips versus a U-series processor you might see in other laptops. It's very confusing because Intel gives them i5 and i7 designations, but the performance will be very different on this. Not bad for what you're going to do with a Chromebook, but just be aware the i5 in here is not the same as you might see in other laptops that have better cooling systems installed. Now, as I mentioned, these start at 649. That will get you a Core M3 Y-series processor. Not spectacularly fast, but probably adequate. Uh, 8 gigs of RAM, which is great on an entry-level machine, and 64 gigabytes of storage. They're all built the same no matter which price you pay. There's a couple different colors available, and they all have a 13.3 inch display. Most of the models will have this 1080p touch display, even the low end one, and then the top end one will have a 4K display uh, with an i7 chip that sells for about $1,400. So you have a lot of different choices available. I think the 1080p display on these looks great. Uh, because 1080p at 13 inches is very sharp. Everything looks nice. There's a nice brightness to the display panel overall, and I think it's definitely adequate. And I think if you're paying the 649 entry point, uh, that's a pretty good price for what you're getting, especially given the overall build quality, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, this one is an i5-8200Y based machine with 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. Uh, this one sells for $849, so the one they sent us is kind of in the middle of their configuration. Storage is not as important on Chromebooks as it might be on a Windows machine, but if you are planning to get into Android apps and Linux applications, you might want a little bit more storage than the default 64 gig installation that's offered. Uh, you can expand the storage in limited ways through the USB ports, but there's no other expandability on this one, so choose carefully uh, when you make your purchase, but I've been pleased with this configuration throughout my testing. And I was really surprised by the fit and finish on this. It looks like a regular old laptop, but there are some real uh, details that they put into this that I think make it a very nice feeling machine. Uh, it's very well balanced in its weight. It's made out of magnesium, uh, 2.4 pounds or 1,090 grams, so just over a kilogram. Uh, but there's a real balance to it, so it doesn't feel all that heavy. Uh, even the display lid here, when you lift it up, doesn't take the rest of the laptop with it, which is nice. So there's a lot of little touches here that I thought were really good for something that doesn't look all that innovative on the surface. I really like the keyboard, very large keys here, well spaced, very nice to type on. It is a thin laptop, so sometimes you'll lose some key travel with that, and the travel isn't as far perhaps as a larger laptop might be, but uh, it's typing quite well due to the key separation and size, and I was very pleased with the typing experience on here. Uh, these are backlit keys, so they'll work in the dark. It's got an equally nice trackpad, a little bit larger than usual. It tracks quite well, no problems there. It is a mechanical click pad, as you can hear there. Really nice speakers on the top of the keyboard deck here, so you've got good stereo separation. The sound quality is far better than I expected, uh, so a good range of sound. They have some bass, not a lot, but some bass to them, uh, so they're not as bad as what I've seen on other laptops, and what's nice is that they're firing out towards you as opposed to having some of these downward firing speakers we've seen on a lot of other laptops out there. So the uh, experience here in using the computer and carrying it uh, feels really nice. Uh, it's got a cool ribbing here at the bottom, which is a good grip that you'll get on it. And you've got a couple of uh, rubber feet that run the whole length of the laptop to keep it 
uh, securely stationed on the desk as you're using it. And because it is fanless, you can put it on your lap and use it on carpet or something if you need to. I think I would probably avoid the carpet as, if you can, but uh, it is something that won't have any air vents blocked on you. Uh, you've got two USB Type-C ports on this one. You've got one on the left and one on the right. These are full-service USB-C ports, so you can plug in power to either side of the laptop. You can use a docking station. You can get display output from these. It'll output 4K at 60 frames per second. We just tested that with a display port adapter a little bit earlier. Uh, so you've got a lot of flexibility on these ports. You can also plug in external hard drives, which we did when we were evaluating the device. So all good on that front. Again, either one of these USB-C ports will deliver you that functionality. And then you have a headphone jack here as well for plugging in your traditional headsets. It does have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on board as well, so you can use your uh, Bluetooth headphones if you want with it there too. It looks a lot like the old MacBooks from about 10 years ago, but it really has a nice refinement to it and I was pleased and surprised by how nice it felt. Now Google says you're gonna get about 12 hours of battery life out of this machine. I would agree that you could probably get close to that mark if you turn the display brightness down and stick to the core Chrome OS functionality, which is the web browser. Uh, when you start doing some of the other stuff we're gonna be doing a little bit later in the review, that will impact battery life more significantly. So if you have the display turned up and you're really hitting the web pretty hard and doing a lot of videos and other things that are stressing the processor more, I think you're gonna be looking at probably an eight to nine hour battery life, maybe less, again, depending on what you're doing with it. But sticking to the basics, I think, will get you uh, through the workday and then some. Now, the one thing that's missing on this machine, which I wish it had, is an SD card slot. I like having those on Chromebooks because they generally don't have all that much internal storage available. And if you want to take some movies with you on the road, it's nice to have that SD card slot there to store that media. This doesn't have it, so you'll have stuff sticking out of the side of those USB-C ports if you do want to take some media with you on the road. Overall performance, though, on this one feels pretty nice. Things spring up very quickly, as you can see here. And of course, Chromebooks are very web-centric devices. And as you can see, uh, things load up here very, very quickly and everything acts very responsively, which is a good thing, especially if you're paying $849 for one of these things. Uh, we did test out YouTube a little bit earlier. I pulled up my 1080p 60 frames per second video that we like to test. It did have a few dropped frames here or there, but generally was able to maintain a nice 1080p video uh, at that frame rate. I think you might see a little bit more drop frames on the Core M3 version, but this i5 version performed just fine. Now, if we take a look at a benchmark, we see the Pixelbook Go here performs below what I expected. We got a score of 79 on version 1.0 of the browserbench.org speedometer test and 48.9 on the second version of that test. That is way below uh, what we got out of the MacBook Air, which is running essentially the same processor. Now, the difference between this one and the MacBook Air beyond price uh, is the fact that the MacBook Air has a cooling fan on its chip, which means it can run faster. These chips, the hotter they get, the slower they go. They actually run slower to prevent themselves from overheating. And I have a feeling here that Google probably tuned this chip to run slower knowing they were putting it into a fanless enclosure so there wasn't as much of a variation in its performance. So just know you're not going to be getting the potential that you could get out of this chip and you might be able to find other Chromebooks and other PCs that run much faster for the same price or less. Another example we've got here on the chart is the X360 from HP. That one is running with the low-end i3 U-series processor we talked about at the beginning of the video. Uh, that one scored pretty much twice as fast as this one does on that same test, but of course it does have a cooling fan that can keep that higher performing chip a little bit cooler. So this gives you an idea as to where this thing will fall in uh, with other devices, but it is again very slim and light, and sometimes there's a price to be paid in performance for something fanless that uh, fits this form factor and weight. Uh, one thing about Chromebooks, though, is that they are really geared as web browsing devices, and perceptually, it feels fine to me. It really is a pretty decent little web browsing machine, uh, but if you were to be doing more computational intensive things, 
that of course will uh, be noticed. But Chrome OS is really geared again on the website of the equation. It doesn't run Windows apps, for example. So a lot of the things that a PC needs in performance, the Chromebook doesn't need. And if you want to get a good idea as to what the differences are between a Chromebook and a typical PC, check out my Chromebook 101 video linked down below in the video description. But things are getting more and more interesting on Chrome OS. They continue to refine the Android app compatibility. Uh, so if you have a phone and buy apps on the Google Play Store, uh, there's a good chance those apps that you paid for will also work on your laptop. Some games don't work all that great. So for example, the new hot Call of Duty game does not run on here. It crashes even though you can install it. But a lot of other stuff does seem to work pretty well. Uh, so we'll take a quick look here at Adobe Lightroom uh, using our mirrored display here. And we've got a photo loaded up in there. Now this is the same version of the app that you would run on your phone or your Android tablet, but it is now running here on my Chrome OS laptop. I did find that sometimes things are a little sluggish in getting started, but once you get in there, you can do all of the photo adjustments you might do on mobile. Uh, it supports the camera, so you could take a picture with its webcam if you wanted to do something like that. Uh, and overall, it's a pretty uh, decent experience here. I also found that they're getting better about adjusting the window position. Uh, before, you wouldn't be able to do something like this in the Android uh, mode of Chrome OS, but now you can start adjusting windows and get things to the size that you want. A lot of the casual games work pretty well on here too, so if we uh, just scroll down here to Crossy Road. Let me pull this thing up again. I always get confused about which way to move the mouse for this menu here. Uh, but we can go over to Crossy Road and you can see this is running in a smaller window. Uh, but I can adjust it a bit here if I want to as well. So there's been some improvement on uh, window adjustment. I think it's going to be app dependent though. Not every app allows you to adjust the window any which way you want. But casual games will run fine on here. You can use the touch screen if keyboard and mouse is not supported. And again, you've got a lot of different Android apps that uh, you can just boot right up here on your Chromebook without uh, too many issues there. All good stuff. Uh, there's also been a lot of progress on the Linux side of the equation. Uh, Linux is certainly not an easy to use thing like the Android components are, but it's certainly making a lot of progress. And I think if you are looking at running Linux on a Chromebook, there's nothing better than the Google devices because those often get the features that you're looking for first. Uh, let's take a look now and see how Linux performs on this device. Now, I've already done a video about how to install Linux apps on your Chromebook. So we're just going to look today and see how well they run. And if you go here, you'll notice that after you get that Linux option enabled in the system settings, you'll have a spot where all your Linux apps will live. Uh, so when you first get it going, you'll have your terminal here, which does what you would expect. You can do all your uh, Unix commands and get things installed that way. Uh, you also, though, have the ability to run full GUI versions of popular open source Linux applications. So this is a spreadsheet that is not Google Docs. This is running locally on my Chromebook. So I could pull it off the network and work on this file and save everything locally and have a very functional open source spreadsheet here. And this does not limit me either. So I could load up my Crossy Road game here and have that running alongside the Linux applications. Everything stays isolated from everything else. I have found that when you click off of the uh, Android app, it goes idle, but once you go back to it, it lights back up again. So you do have a good amount of multitasking here, at least very quick switching to have Android apps and Linux apps loaded up at the same time. They've made a lot of progress on this Linux feature. In fact, now uh, you can actually take advantage of the built-in graphic capabilities of the Intel processors. Before they weren't taking advantage of those Intel GPUs, now they are. Let's take a look at its gaming performance. So I loaded up the Linux version of Steam on my Chromebook a little bit earlier. There's some very easy to follow instructions online to do that. And we're going to start off with a game that I know runs very well on these particular Intel chips. This is Shovel Knight. And I'll let it load up here. But you can see how fast everything kind of sprung up. And I'll go and start the game and just continue from where I last left off just to get a feel for how things perform. Now in the past with this Linux functionality, we weren't getting great performance because it wasn't able to connect up with the Intel uh, GPU. Uh, but now we are playing uh, Shovel Knight here with uh, 
pretty good frame rate. We're at about 59 frames per second, which is just about perfect here for this, uh, for this particular game. This one, of course, runs best at 60. And I would imagine the uh, little frame rate counter here is just operating within the margin of error. So all in a very playable Shovel Knight experience using my Chromebook running Steam on Linux, which is great and on par with what I can do normally with this chip on Windows. All good stuff there to start with. Let's look at something though a little bit more strenuous now. So this is Rocket League running on our Chromebook, the Linux version of Rocket League, and we're getting about 20 frames per second-ish here uh, at 1080p with the lowest possible settings. It's not spectacular, but it's playable. Uh, and it's about close to where I would expect this hardware to perform. If this chip was tuned a little bit faster, I think we'd see maybe 30 to 35 frames per second versus what we're getting here. Uh, but again, it's never going to be a gaming machine. However, as we saw, Shovel Knight worked great on this. Uh, and I think you can get a lot of games similar to that running nicely in addition to a lot of older games. Uh, emulation has a lot of potential here, both through the Linux uh, connection, but also some of the Android apps in the Google Play Store. So there's a lot more you can do now with these Chromebooks to, to pass the time, essentially. Again, it won't replace what you can do with a Windows machine or something with more CPU and graphical horsepower, but nonetheless, it is uh, starting to come to a point where Chrome OS is becoming its own thing. And I'm really pleased with the development that Google has made on this. And it's also been great to see consumers developing an interest in these because they're very secure. They're hard to hack. Even this Linux implementation is isolated from all the things that you're doing uh, with your Google account and Chrome OS. So it's really being done in a very modern way here, and I'm quite pleased with it. Now, as for the Chromebook itself, I'm quite happy with it. Uh, there's a lot of attention to detail in its design, and you wouldn't notice that by looking at it because it looks like your run-of-the-mill laptop, but I'm really happy with this overall. I think it's a very nicely designed piece of equipment. Uh, my only knock against it is the fact that this processor could be doing better. Uh, I know why they made the decisions they made, but there is more performance in here than what you're going to get out of it. But for most consumers, they're not going to notice much of it because they're going to be doing this. They're going to be browsing the web, using web-based applications, likely not pushing the Linux side as heavily as we just did. Uh, so I think for most folks in the market for one of these things, uh, this is going to be adequate. Uh, but if you really want the best performance, you'll probably have to spend more to get the i7 version. And even that i7 won't be running as fast as it could be. So just keep that in mind if you are an enthusiast. But on the flip side, you're going to get uh, all of the latest Linux updates from Google likely here first before it gets to other platforms. And if you are really looking to push Chrome OS to its maximum, uh, the Google-based devices are probably the best place to start although other platforms do get those new features eventually. So great machine here. I have really not too many knocks against it. Uh, well constructed and a really nice uh, interpretation of what a Chromebook can be. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Brian Parker and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.